Today's video is sponsored by Surfshark. The magical girl epidemic of the late 90s, early 2000s truly raised a generation. They had girls everywhere dreaming of one day waking up and being entrusted with this new sense of magical power. Maybe you'd find your own talking animal sidekick or perhaps be gifted some jewelry that is suspiciously glowing. Now, I don't know about you, but sadly none of those dreams came true for me. What I have been left with, however, is an obsession for cute outfits. These girlies were really raising the bar when it came to expectations of what cartoon characters would wear, aka not just one outfit for all of eternity. I love me some nostalgic style inspo. I've already covered what people would probably consider some of the most iconic series, but I feel like there's one that is sadly always left off that list. Like to the point where I thought I had gone crazy because for the longest time, I never saw anyone mention this series until maybe like 2022. And from then on, I've gotten a couple of random things pop up on my TikTok feed, like once in a blue moon. So I'm like, okay, it's definitely not as popular as I originally thought it was, but the girls who get it, definitely get it. I ended up doing an Instagram poll and to my surprise, the witch lookbook actually got majority votes. I thought there was not a chance for it, but here we are. To be fair, it's been a very long time coming. You might be like, oh, February, that wasn't that long ago. No, check that timestamp again, 2023. The thing is when I'm really excited about a concept, it somehow becomes too much pressure and my brain convinces myself that everything I have planned just isn't gonna cut it. It's never gonna be good enough. So just keep pushing it to the back burner. But a couple of months ago, I made a Pinterest board saving a bunch of outfits from the comics. And then on my YouTube feed comes this glorious, four hour deep dive from Lisa. And that was the final push. I was like, yep, this is a sign. You can't back out of it again. So please make sure you go and check out her video because without it, you might've been waiting another year for this lookbook. I really want to get back into these TV and film inspired videos this year. So you need to hold me to it this time. Okay. Let me know your thoughts, any recommendations, even if they're not available on my streaming platforms, chances are I will be able to find a way with today's video sponsor, award-winning VPN Surfshark. Not only are they protecting me while I'm browsing online, but they also allow me to unlock content from around the world. So Surfshark is a virtual private network available to download as an app or browser extension and will allow you to quickly and easily change your location settings and then instantly have access to a ton more content that's not usually available in your region. Whether you want to find something new or rediscover some old favorites from anime, teen TV, iconic films, K-dramas, drag race, you name it, your options are endless. It's also an absolute must if you want to make sure you're browsing securely online. Surfshark do this through various methods, including adding an extra layer of protection when you're using public Wi-Fi and by preventing companies and bots from tracking your personal information. Surfshark also offer unlimited devices under just one account, so you will always feel safe. You can get an exclusive deal with my code SPOTLIGHT, and at the moment they're offering up to three extra months for free. And since Surfshark offer a 30-day money-back guarantee, you can try it all risk-free for yourselves via the link on screen, scan that QR code, or check out more details details in the description box. So which is actually an acronym for the five girls names, Will, Irma, Tarani, Cornelia, and Hey Lynn. Each of them represent a different element and together form the new guardians. For the longest time, I didn't actually realize how young the girls were. As a kid, I feel like everyone feels aspirational. So age isn't as much as a concept, but now you're telling me that this is a 12 year old with better personal style than me. Regardless of their age, they truly were serving up some looks. And I really appreciate that. Although you can see that the characters have a personal preference or lean towards certain styles, they weren't too boxed in. Everything still feels very free. It's not like this character must only wear these three colors. <laughs> Winks. I feel like that is the elephant in the room because for some reason, this feels like some sort of fan war between the Winx and Witch fandoms. If you are a true magical girl lover, I feel like you just ate everything up. Trust me, I understand the love for the costuming and Winx. It's so playful and vibrant, but I gotta say, I think I actually prefer the styling we see in Witch. It's so stylish, but it still feels very wearable as opposed to Winx, where when I'm trying to take style inspo, it almost ends up feeling a bit cosplay-y. And I think your experience with this series probably differs greatly depending on where you live. It actually originated in Italy. And from what I've seen in Europe, you guys got some really cool inclusions with the magazines. Tragically, 
I actually grew up on just the good old-fashioned novels so I was just reading the books and only getting a little taste of the cute outfits with a couple of comic panels in the beginning and end. Later they went on to release full graphic novel versions jam-packed with these beautiful color comic pages. I would have absolutely lost it for these as a kid but I recently picked this one up secondhand. And of course we have The Bridge That Brings Us All Together, the Disney TV show that ran for two seasons. Today I'm mostly going to be taking inspiration from the graphic novel novels just because the outfits have so much more detail. If someone has ever tried to categorize you as a weird fashion girly, I guarantee your favorite in the series would have been Haylin. She's serving you interesting layers, funky color combinations, and accessories for days. No surprise that I have a soft spot for her and her wardrobe. Her outfits can be a little bit harder to transition into real life just because they are a little bit more cartoonish than the other girls. For that reason, I tried to stick more true to her accessories and then had to take liberties with some of the other elements. There was absolutely no choice but to include goggles in one of the outfits. I love this as a character design and animation. Unfortunately, when I go to wear it, I always feel like I should just be going swimming. But overall, we're still feeling very very Haylin coded to me. These pinks and purples is what instantly comes to mind. And we also see her a lot in puffer jackets. I decided to opt for the best version instead, just so it didn't swallow the entire outfit. And I do think we'd share the same addiction for shopping on Baiyi, so the hysteric glamour sweater just made sense to me. I recently thrifted this blue sweater and it reminded me so much of this image. I actually remember back back in the day when these were really trendy, but I was kind of too young to be shopping from those sort of brands, so I'm just so excited to have it now. No surprise I couldn't pull off a copy and paste, but I tried to stick to a similar silhouette with this pleated skirt. But like I said, when it comes to Haylin, it is all about the accessories, and more often than not, she's going to be wearing leg warmers. And I also thought the ear moss would be a good touch. The camera kind of washes them out, but they actually have little kurumis on them, so the purple ties in nicely with the accent colors we have going on. I thought it was interesting how many tops we see her in that have the string tie-up details so I knew I wanted to include this top but it is way too cropped for my liking especially considering the girls are more so in low-waisted items. I ended up layering a long sleeve underneath and I think it actually turned out for the best because the pattern brings some life to the look. Everything else felt very one-dimensional. The boots look almost identical to a pair we see her in but I think it's actually the coat that brings it back to Haylin. Before that I'm like mm, have I strayed too far from the original source material but once that purple coat's on I'm like no I could totally see her wearing this. Okay so originally I was only doing three looks for each of the girls but then I was like no that's not enough so I added on an extra one but I like to consider that the wild card okay don't take it too seriously because I don't think this is as spot on. It definitely still has those same elements I'd expect to see her in like the leg warmers, the stripy scarf but something about the color palette is not quite right but I still think a fun choice. Also you just can't convince me that she wouldn't be rocking these headphones like come on. Will, who's essentially the main character, definitely leans more into a tomboy sort of aesthetic. In some series that might mean they never get a cute fit, but that is certainly not the case here. I actually love her character design. If Gigi's your favorite in the Peach Riot series, then I definitely think you'd also be a fan of Will. A pair of baggy jeans and a hoodie felt like an absolute no-brainer for Will. The cut and graphic on this one still kept things cute though, and we do actually see her in a star motif a couple of times. What would have been even better was if we had something with a frog, because that's kind of her signature. I had less accessories to play around with but we do see her in a striped scarf a couple of times and I don't know I just thought that this bag suited her style perfectly. If you're not thinking of baggy jeans for world then it's probably cargoes hence this look. We're pretty much following the same sort of outfit formula. You got to give it to her. The girl is consistent with this cute meets tomboy sort of aesthetic. And I don't think she actually wears a lot of red, but for some reason I kept gravitating towards it when I was pulling out outfit options. I guess to kind of represent her hair color maybe. But other than the color, this particular style of jacket, I could totally see her rocking. And although we do see her in pants majority of the time, that doesn't mean she doesn't break out the mini skirts here and there. And I thought this little cargo one would be the perfect option. I matched the belt with the crossbody bag and looking back now I do wish I had a gone for something chunkier with the boots just to balance the look a little bit better. This six dimension top is my go-to on lazy days. It always looks good with minimal effort which I feel like Will would also appreciate. I think just leaving it there would have been more accurate but you guys know me I'm addicted to adding another layer. I was kind of trying to emulate when she throws on an oversized anorak and I thought that this silhouette on the vest was a good option but the color palette just isn't it. I feel like it's pretty red to see cartoon characters styled in this much black so that was kind of a miss on my part. 
Tarani, I feel like, is potentially the most boxed in style-wise, just because they do seem to stick to more of a color palette for her. A lot of warm tones, orange, mustard, red, brown. Of course, keeping in mind that her representative element is fire, but despite the seemingly color palette limitation they put on her, I would actually describe her style itself as being very carefree and creative and kind of having a boho undertone to it. Immediately, I knew I had to pull out this jacket cardigan situation because it looks like something that could have come straight out of Tarani's own wardrobe. Actually, even just overall, this might be one of the most accurate outfits because even the basic pieces underneath with the red turtleneck and the brown corduroy pants are just so her. And like I said, her style almost has that boho influence, which I tried to keep with the accessories of the necklace and the belt. And of course, you have to put on some signature glasses. Okay, this outfit, definitely not for everyone. Totally understand if you don't see the vision because it kind of looks like it's come out of some nightmare 2000s Disney show. And I don't know what it says about me, but I actually kind of like it. I kind of smushed together a couple of the outfits I saw her in. For example, the camo capris and then also the top half with like the baby doll cami and then the orange bolero. Probably for good reason that she wasn't originally styled in them together, but I don't know. I like the juxtaposition. I also think the beanie is something you would totally expect to see her in in the cooler months as well. But now something for the warmer weather and I kind of went off script like I'm not taking direct inspiration from a particular image but I still think it really works. I have this kind of wrap cargo skirt and then I love that the top features so many of her key colors and in this kind of paisley pattern again bringing in that boho influence. I do think this is potentially a little bit dressed up for her like maybe the sort of thing you'd expect to see her wearing further down the track in the college years. One thing about me is I will take any chance to wear a dress over pants and we do see her wear those more so in the TV show but still I thought it'd be a good inclusion. I think it's such a cute outfit. It's been too long since I've worn this dress so I'm glad I brought it back to my attention. The only thing I would change to wear it out I'd probably ditch the headband headscarf just because I don't think it suits my face shape but I definitely think it is something Tarani would wear. Out of all the characters I feel like Irma's style isn't quite as defined which girl fair okay you're literally a preteen we see her in different types of outfits sometimes in outfits that i wouldn't say necessarily reflect her personality but in the comics specifically i would say her style leans a little bit more youthful for example here we have the denim capris with the floral detail and also the cutesy colored sweater vests i'm not so sure this is the sort of thing i would typically gravitate towards at least not all together but i do think it is very sweet and very irma Another way that materializes in her outfits is the more bold color combinations and also the loud graphics. And I actually saw her in almost like strawberry merch on a few separate occasions. I was like, say no more. I have the perfect top for the job. I layered it with the striped cardigan that brought more of those colors out of the shirt and opted for a red midi length skirt. I don't know, I feel like this is very on point for that particular time period, but for some reason it also reminds me of what you would have seen on TikTok in 2020. So that's kind of throwing me a little bit. This was the one look I saw and was like, you know what? I do actually kind of own that outfit. Of course, it's not exact. I like to put my own spin on things as always. But I mean, a little tie up cardigan and a denim skirt is just a classic at this point. I feel like it doesn't matter when you're wearing it. It's going to look good. And specifically, I do really love the color palette of the different shades of blue here. Okay, so if previously you are only ever familiar with the TV series, I'm guessing all of that was very confusing for you because that is not the same girly. I don't know why, but for some reason they decided to turn her into some sort of baddie. Like the outfits are a total vibe, but just not at all what I would envision for Irma. But you know, we had to give it a shot anyway, mostly taking inspiration from this particular look, but just in general, I feel like she wore a lot of these green khaki sort of colors. The coat is definitely the standout here though. And I actually really regret throwing on the beanie because I feel like it's clashing and drawing attention away from the gorgeousness that is this jacket. Okay, so Cornelia is just low-key that girl. Often in this demographic of media, I feel like they portray the blonde in the group as like the fashion shopping addict. And often that visual will correlate with things like pink, glitter, mini skirts, heels, Nothing wrong with any of those things. I too love them, but I just think it's interesting that with Cornelia, they took a different approach. I feel like she is chic beyond her years. Like if you consider yourself a long skirt girly, bow down to the queen. A maxi skirt is 100% her go-to. Occasionally we'll see her in other things, but I mean, come on, even her transformation outfit is a maxi. I'm gonna go ahead and say this is my favorite outfit of the entire video. It just gives such cool girl energy. Obviously we've got the signature skirt leg. I also think the actual 
cut of this being so A-line really leans into a more cartoonish sort of feel because it has that extra volume. A lot of the time Cornelia is quite covered up on top as well, but often there's some sort of interesting detail about the neckline, which is what I loved about this baby blue sweater, having the asymmetric detail. You can button it all the way down, but I thought it was cute having this little floral cami peek through underneath. The hat and shoe selection might be a little bit more quirky, I guess, than what she would typically opt for, but I still love it. So many of my skirts are just that little bit too short to be considered a true maxi, but this cargo one hits the brief perfectly. I always love, love, love the combination of pink and green, so I tried to bring that in through the halter top. The styling might not necessarily be what instantly comes to mind for Cornelia, but I was actually taking direct inspiration from this particular image for the hat, the bag, and the little cardigan. Completely off topic, but there's also something about this hat and belt combination that makes me feel like I'm on Veronica Mars. But anyway, moving on to the next fit, and you guessed it, it is again a maxi. A lot of the time there's not too many patterns in comics and cartoons because it is more intricate to draw I guess, but we saw her in this plaid skirt one time and I ran with it. Unfortunately I didn't have anything in the same colours, but I just tried to play around with pieces that I thought Cornelia would also reach for. It still felt like something was missing so I tried doing her side part and oh my god it brought back terrible memories because this does not suit me at all. I don't care that it's coming back in trend. It felt absolutely criminal not to include a poncho for Cornelia because it's definitely one of her staples. Surprisingly, I only have one in my collection at the moment that didn't really represent any of the ones we saw her in, but I did see this look that I knew I'd be able to recreate with a pink dress and white cowboy boots, which also conveniently happened to match the poncho I have. So those were all my interpretations of the witch girls. Let me know your thoughts. Which guardian style do you resonate with the most? Do you even know this series? Like I said, I want to get back into more TV and film videos. So let me know if you have any requests. Are there any other shows that you feel like are falling under the radar? Also, I just realized I didn't include any of the villains in today's video, but maybe that could be a separate video, like most iconic villain outfits. I don't know. And of course, don't forget to check out today's video sponsor, Surfshark. I can't believe I've been using them for almost four years now. That is crazy. So happy to have them back on the channel once again. So you can check out that deal for yourself via the links on screen or in the description box. But yeah, thanks for watching and hopefully I see you really, really soon. Bye.